Welcome to PokerRailbird.com, your source for mastering the art and science of poker. I'm Terry Wood, and today we're discussing a crucial aspect of poker strategy, calculating your pot odds and hand probabilities in real time. Understanding this mathematical process is essential for making informed decisions at the table and will assist you in deciding whether to call, fold, or raise. Let's get to it. For our discussion, we will say we are playing in a $2, $5 blind, no limit Texas Hold'em game with nine players. We are on the button with pocket eights. There are five callers to see the flop, so the pot is $25 pre-flop. First, let's look at the probability of improving our hand on the flop. The probability of flopping a set, meaning 1-8 on the flop, is about 12% or 7.5 to 1 odds. We also know there is about an 85% probability of an overcard to our eights coming on the flop. The flop is the king of diamonds, the nine of spades, and the seven of hearts. Two overcards to our eights. The under the gun player leads out for $20. Everyone folds to the cutoff. She calls, and now the action is on you. The pot is $65, and it's $20 to call. What are your pot odds? Calculating pot odds in Texas Hold'em involves comparing the current size of the pot to the cost of a contemplated call. This helps us determine if making the call is profitable over the long term. In our example, the current pot is $65. To get your pot odds, take the current size of the pot, $65, divided by your cost to call, $20. This will provide us with 3.25 to 1 pot odds. Now, let's calculate the probability of making our hand. There are 47 unseen cards. You have seen the 2 in your hand, your pocket 8s, and the 3 on the flop. Assuming no other player is holding an 8, two 8s remain in the deck. So, your odds of hitting an 8 on the turn are 2 out of 47, or 4.25%, which is 23.5 to 1 odds, and about the same probability on the river you have, in total, about an 8.42% chance or about 11.5 to 1 odds of hitting your hand, counting both the turn and river. When calculating your pot odds versus your hand probabilities, you must look at each card, turn, and river independently, as there is the opportunity for betting on both streets. Let me explain why. Back to our pocket eights. The pot is $65, and it's $20 to call, giving you 3.25 to 1 pot odds, and the action is on you. Do you call? The math says no. Why? With pot odds of 3.25 to 1 and hand odds of 22.53 to 1, it's a losing proposition in this particular hand and, more importantly, in the long term. The pot odds must be better than or equal to your hand equity for the call to be mathematically correct. This means you must have sufficient pot odds to call the turn bet and then the correct pot odds to call the river. Let's look at another hand. For this hand, we have the Ten of Spades and the Jack of Spades. Again, you are on the button. But this time, the pot is raised to $15 by the cutoff. You call. The small blind folds. Big blind calls. Under the gun calls. And under the gun plus two calls. Now, the pot is $77 pre-flop. The flop is the Eight of Spades, the Nine of Spades, and the Three of Diamonds. You flopped the world, right? Let's see. The big blind bets $50, which is about 70% of the pot. The under the gun folds. Under the gun plus two folds. And the cutoff calls. The pot is $177 with a $50 cost to call, giving you 3.54 to 1 pot odds. Do you call? Let's take a look at our outs and probabilities. There are nine spades remaining in the deck, which gives us a jack high flush draw. For queens and four sevens for a straight draw, and of course, we also have the open-ended straight flush draw. This gives us 17 outs, nine spades, for queens, and four sevens. But one of those sevens and one of those queens is also a spade, so we have to deduct two, giving us 15 outs. For the turn, our hand probability is 31.91%. 47 unseen cards divided by our 15 outs equals 31.91%, or odds of 2.1 to 1. If we miss the turn, then the river is marginally better at 32.6%, but the odds remain about 2.1 to 1. So, for the turn, the mathematically correct play is to call. Why? Because the odds of making your hand 2.1 to 1 is better than the pot odds of 3.54 to 1. Another way of saying this is you are getting 3.54 to 1 on your money against roughly 2 to 1 probability of making your hand on the turn. Therefore, 
you have positive pot odds in relationship to your hand equity. We call $50, and now the pot is $227. The turn card is the king of diamonds. Three players are left in the hand. The big blind, the cutoff, and you, the button. Let's do a little analysis of the board cards. The board now has two flush draws, diamonds and spades. It also has a potential gut shot straight draw. If a player holds queen jack, they need a 10, but you do have a blocker. There's an open-ended straight draw if players hold 6-7, and if that is the 6 and 7 of spades, then throw in a straight flush draw, but again you hold the 10 of spades, a blocker to both the straight draw flush draw and straight flush draw. Then, of course, there is an overcard to your jack and all the possible sets and two pair combinations. There is also the possibility that another player holds two spades, with one of their cards an overcard to your jack. About a 36% probability of the two spades and a 9% chance of an overcard to your jack. The big blind bets $160, again, about 70% of the pot and the cutoff calls. Now the pot is $547, giving you pot odds of 3.42 to 1. You still have the same 15 outs, with a 32.6% probability of hitting your hand. The percent probability increased slightly from the turn because now there are 46 unseen cards, but the odds remain about the same at 2.1 to 1. Again, the math says you make the call, as you have favorable pot odds regarding your hand equity. In this video, every decision to call or fold was made based strictly on math pot odds versus hand equity. Nothing more, nothing less. At Poker Railbird, we believe in using math as a foundation, not a cage. There are times when behavior, betting patterns, or live tells may override pure calculation, and those layers are part of the deeper game. But here, the focus was singular, to show you how the math works. We also rounded some numbers, for example, 8% instead of 7.97% to reflect real world in the moment decisions, not spreadsheet perfection. If you found this helpful, hit subscribe, share it with your crew, and tap that bell so you don't miss the next breakdown. I'm Terry. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you at the tables.